Gold prices climbing today as investors buy into the precious metal in order to seek protection from fiscal problems in Europe and perhaps even in the United States. My next guest is betting that gold is going to continue its gain. As a founder and former chairman of Gold Corp, he's already built one of the world's largest gold companies. Now he's trying to do a second act, merging two junior mining companies. He runs into one entity. He wants to name it McEwen Mining, and he hopes is going to qualify for entry into the S&P 500 by 2015. Here for a CEO sit-down is Bob McEwen. He's the chief executive of Minera Andes and U.S. Gold. Good to have you with us on Bloomberg. Tell us a little bit more about your predictions for gold, Robert. Do you think that gold is going to be worth $5,000 an ounce? Absolutely, in three to four years. And silver at 200. What is going to drive the price of gold to such heights? More people will think they need it in their portfolio, and there's a real shortage of it. Uh, we're in one of these rare cycles that so far has happened three times in the last 110 years. Um, and it's just the uncertainty in the economy, uncertainty in the geopolitical sphere. People are just nervous and they want a place to put their money in case something really bad happens. But Robert, haven't we always had uncertainty? I mean, there's never any free lunch in the marketplace. There's no sure investment. What makes you think that gold is going to more than double from its current level? Why 5,000? Why not say 10,000? Why that particular number? Oh, I like 5,000, but no, if you, if you looked at the last cycle, gold went from 1970 through 80 from $40 an ounce to a little over $800 an ounce, a 20-fold increase. And that was the first time gold was freed from government control. I think you'll see a similar occurrence, and our low this time was achieved in 2001, and that was $250 an ounce. So you're up to 5,000 if you wanted to. Another way of looking at it, you inflation adjust that $800 number in 1980, and you're up over $2,000. And there's just Gold is underrepresented in portfolios right now. It hasn't been an asset that people have held. Well, you say it's underrepresented because people haven't held it. Perhaps it's because they don't think that buying a particular metal that only has use as jewelry or maybe a store of value, as some would argue, uh, isn't necessarily where they're going to grow their money. Why is gold considered to be such a long-term store of value? Well, I think we have to look at Fort Knox, and it's full of gold. And we look at the French Bundesbank, or the German Bundesbank, and the French Central Bank. They're the largest holders of gold in the world right now, as part of their foreign reserves. Yeah, but they I mean, the UK, for example, the Bank of England, they don't have any gold. So I mean, there is always someone who says they don't need it, while others say they do. Bank of England was a brilliant trader. They sold their last ounce of gold at $252 an ounce. Well, having said now that, I, mean, why, I guess my point is, why is gold considered to be such a store of value? It's only because there's an agreement that between two people or two organizations that it has value. It doesn't have any intrinsic value. That's true. But right now, the world is saying they're willing to pay better than $1,500 an ounce for gold. And it's in short supply relative to the amount of money that's being pushed into the system. All right, well, it's, tell us about um, the supply of gold right now. Where is it coming from? Places such as Canada, the United States, or more far away places such as uh, China? They're the biggest gold producer. China has become the biggest gold producer. Nevada is a very large producer of gold. South Africa, Canada, it, it's coming from many countries around the world. Uh, but it isn't increasing, it increases annually at about a pace of 1% of the total gold stocks. So it doesn't expand anywhere near the rate of the monetary expansion happening in the Western world today. And it's basically saying the West is trying to, governments of the West are trying to resolve our economic problems and political uncertainty by printing more money, money that they don't have, and creating enormous levels of debt, and that's making people anxious. So we're speaking about gold with Rob McEwen. He's the chief executive of Minera Andis, as well as U.S. Gold. He's also the founder and former chairman of Gold Corp. Rob McEwen, tell us about this combination that you're trying to put together between Minera Andis and U.S. Gold. Minera focuses on gold mining in Argentina. 
U.S. gold operations, as you've described, in Nevada and also Mexico. Why combine them? There's a spot in the marketplace. Well, one, it moves us closer to our goal of inclusion in the S&P 500. But by combining the two, it address, addresses two of the weaknesses in the companies. Monera has production but no growth pipeline, and U.S. Gold doesn't have production, but it does have a growth pipeline. And put the two together, you'll have the production, the growth, plus good exploration properties, a strong balance sheet, better market liquidity, better market presence, and a better shot at growing faster. How are you going to make this combination happen? Is it going to cost more money? No. No, we'll, we'll produce a, um, a uh, fast-growing, low-cost, mid-tier silver producer out of the combination. Uh, we put a ratio up. I'm the largest shareholder of both companies, and we put a ratio, an exchange ratio, 0.4 shares of Monera for um, a share of the new company and one share of U.S. Gold for a share of the new company. Um, other than the transactional costs, there's nothing involved in there. We came up with that ratio by looking at the trading range over the last three months, six months, nine months, 24 months. And it, the two stocks have been trading in a very narrow band. And I look at the market as the arbitrator of value. And so that was the basis for going forward. Robert, why would you want it to be included? Why is it so important for it to be included in the S&P 500? Companies in the S&P 500 are mainly purchased, if you would describe it as such, because investment managers have to buy the index. They're not necessarily buying gold. That seems to be counter to the argument of investing in a gold company. I believe there's a hunger and a need for... Uh, an American precious metal company and right now in the S&P 500 there's only one gold stock and that's Newmont. It needs some competition and there's a, an appetite for gold stocks. And I, I just wanted to come back, Pim, to your question about why gold. Uh, gold is money and the question of intrinsic value, no value in gold, no intrinsic value there but there's no intrinsic value in the dollar bill you hold in your pocket. It's all about confidence. And they're going to gold because of confidence in its value, holding, it will hold its value. All right. Now, having said that about gold, what are your prospects for silver? Do you think the price of silver is going to increase as well? Absolutely. I, it'll run parallel to gold and probably perform better than gold. And I see in the time frame that gold hits 5000 silver hitting $200 an ounce. Now, what, uh, what makes you think that silver is going to increase so substantially? What, where's the demand going to come from? The same reason, confidence in the monetary system, looking for an asset that will hold value. Silver could well outperform gold just because of its historical relationship, the number of ounces of silver that purchases one ounce of gold. So historically, it's been about 16 to 1, and currently it's 43 to 1. Um, started 2010 at 65 to 1, um, and recently was down to 32 to 1, 32 ounces to 1 ounce of gold. What's your time frame for these price estimates for gold at $5,000 an ounce and silver at $200 an ounce? When will this happen? Four years out. Four years out. You think four years from now, 2015, will be at $5,000 for gold and $200 an ounce for silver? That's right. And if that does not happen, do you think that these mining companies will be able to sustain themselves given the total cost of production? The, there's still a, a margin for these producers to make money, good money. Uh, the big gold companies, are, are, they're flush with cash and their revenues are, are very large. I would hope that they would see to it to start paying their shareholders a larger dividend. And, Getting a yield on a gold stock would be a very attractive space to be right now. When you combine U.S. gold as well as uh, Monero Andes, will you be paying a, a greater dividend to investors? We don't pay a dividend yet. Right. Uh, I, would, I would like to get into that position of paying a dividend. Um, to me, it's a form of rent, and, and you have to emphasize on management that shareholders need to get something while they're waiting for the capital gain. 
All right, we're going to leave it there, but I want to thank you very much. Rob McEwen, uh, he is the chief executive of Minera Andes, as well as U.S. Gold, talking about a combination of the two junior gold mining companies.